Okay, so welcome to uh, the uh, ERI annual conference uh, this, take, this year uh, taking place uh, online. Uh, I hope that you had uh, a nice day uh, with the plenary and semi-plenary semi sessions. Um, and now it's time for the, for the closing session. So welcome, welcome to the closing session of this year annual conference. It's actually not the end of the conference, as you know. The conference will continue until next Friday. So there will be plenty of other things to learn and, and to interact with others. Um, uh, but this is the last session uh, run as a plenary session. So um, uh, welcome back. So next slide, please. So I would like to start um, uh, announcing our next year uh, annual conference. Uh, you know, it will be held in, in Berlin. You know that this conference this year would have taken place in Berlin uh, in the absence of the virus. Um, well, I will not make the story uh, again. You, you have, everyone has that in mind. Um, so we, we decided to postpone the conference. So the 26th conference of the ERI will take place in Berlin. Uh, hopefully, uh, we will be able to uh, meet uh, in person uh, at the occasion of the next year uh, conference. I cross my finger. Um, uh, and then now I give the floor to Klaus Essenach, who is the co-chair of this year and next year annual conference uh, program committee uh, who, who, will present, who will present the plan uh, for the next year annual conference. Uh, Klaus, I give you the floor. Yeah, thank you very much, Christian. Um, uh, yeah, we, what we do here is we basically repeat our invitation from last year to get you all physically to Berlin. So I hope we will meet again here in nearly exactly one year. Um, and next slide, please. Um, of course, you might know that Berlin um, is a place uh, where a lot of research institutes in sustainability fields work, and it's a hub of green innovation. Um, uh, and of course, we need our people that are organizing this. So you see here, basically, that people doing this this year volunteered to do it again next year. So that was some kind of effort, but we are happy to offer this with one person more, uh, Marco Zilo added to the team who will do a lot of the works that Paul Nietzsche has done for um, all of you. Um, so pl next please. Um, we will have a nice venue actually, that's a place where I'm sitting at the moment, the campus of Technical University. Um, it's a very uh, modern and communicative venue built in the 1970s and it's in the western part of Berlin where we have our, um, our discussions and our plenaries and so on and so forth. Um, but we will also go to the eastern part of Berlin. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, there will be an opening reception in the Museum of Natural History, so where you can um, you know, live your fascination for extinct species like dinosaurs. Um, and uh, in the, for the conference dinner, we will go to the cultural brewery, an old brewery that is now a nice um, a cultural place. Um, next, please. Um, of course, we are in the middle of Europe, so we hope that you will indeed reach us here well um, and also physically, um, not just uh, virtually as we do here. So we need to keep fingers crossed how we will have this next year, but um, I hope the best and I hope that we can basically see you in real life again and that you are used to traveling in real life um, again. Next, please. Um, so this is just another snapshot from the nice city of Berlin. Um, and when you go to the spatial chat, as some of you have already done today, you can also visit other nice places from Berlin already today. Um, uh, so next, please. Um, so this is a kind of short reflection on our preparations and how things went so far with this virtual conference this year. Um, there were a lot of changes, some are more ad hoc, more improvised, some are more strategic. You might have recognized that some things were slightly differently uh, by good or bad reasons this year. So overall, we had a list of accepted papers 
of uh, 583 and there were there are further papers that did not volunteer to present online so this is a larger number than usual we were just able that uh, due to less space restrictions we could we required less rejection also of good papers um, of course we had plenary sessions semi-plenary just before um, and as usual several policy and thematic sessions that were streamlined into the program since we needed to improvise and there were some um, uh, keynotes that could not come under these conditions we upgraded some of the policy sessions to semi-plenaries or plenaries, so that maybe also explains a little bit how they were, um, were they made. Um, we had overall, um, in the end, more than 4,000 participants that registered for participation, so that is, of course, much more um, than that register um, for a conventional ERIE conference. Um, we don't know what the percentage of real attendance is, but I think that's in a huge number. And we experimented with virtual social events, so some have already been in this spatial chat. And maybe just after this closing session, you will uh, use your time to, things, to do things I have already done, uh, to fetch you a cold bottle of beer, and then join to the spatial chat um, afterwards, uh, uh, with the announced date at uh, seven o'clock. Um, so that's a kind of um, uh, summary of what we did. And I think Christian is now um, uh, chairing a discussion where we reflect on how things work out and might be done in the future. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much, Klaus. Thank you for, uh, for uh, in particular, thank you for uh, accepting to uh, not only organize this virtual conference, which is really a tour de force, as I told you this morning, but also continue to accept to organize the conference next year, uh, probably in person. So uh, thank you very much for all this commitment to, uh, to work for, the, uh, for the, uh, the life of the association. And I'm sure we will remember uh, not only this year virtual event, but also next year, um, uh, conference, uh, I'm sure, uh, given what I learned from your experience in quality and competence on managing these things, I'm sure it will be even better in person next year. So uh, that's a, a, right, a right way to introduce our short uh, um, uh, panel analysis uh, that will last for 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, I, I would like to exchange ideas about uh, what we learned from these uh, three months. Uh, and in particular, uh, thinking about um, uh, what, what, uh, ex how this experience of going online uh, for the annual conference, uh, what, what can we learn from that in terms of the future of uh, the annual conferences? Um, so, so before going there, I, I would like to remind you that, again, the conference is not over. Uh, there will be a lot of different events uh, taking place until next Friday. And so we, we will have to, to wait until next Friday to ask you to make your own evaluation of the conference. So you will get an email or, so, uh, or something like that that will ask you to evaluate the different, uh, the different events that took place at the occasion of this virtual conference. Please, in particular this year, we really need your feedback. Um, so uh, we cannot wait this feedback because we have to uh, uh, continue for the for next week. But but still, I think we can uh, have a short discussion with the people who were at the who were at the center, at the core of this uh, of this event, and getting their own. Um, uh, evaluation of the situation uh, and the own view of what should be done in the future, given uh, the success and potential failure of the different uh, things that have been uh, performed at the occasion of the event. So, so um, for this uh, for this discussion, I will ask uh, uh, the three co-chairs of this year and next year annual uh, pro conference program uh, committee, that is uh, Claude Eisenach. Uh, Caroline Fischer and Maria Loreiro uh, to contribute to this discussion uh, together with a colleague who has been absolutely key uh, in, uh, in this year and next year annual conference. In the, in, and I mean here, uh, Georg Meran, who uh, is the chair of the local organization committee. 
And finally, I uh, wanted to ask Fubi uh, Kondori, uh, who, will, who will succeed me as the president of the association in one year and a half from now, uh, to, um, to, to talk about uh, what she thinks about uh, uh, what should be done in the future, because she will be the key person to make the decision there. So, uh, close. Uh, I propose that you uh, take the floor first. You have three minutes exactly as the other three, uh, four persons on the panel. Yeah, thank you very much. I would just share my midterm evaluation of the conference. Um, I think it's the numbers of attendance is really great. So it's about registered people. It's about many people being in sessions. So sessions that I watched were um, larger than I usually know from Erie conferences. So that's more easy way to, to get to those sessions. I observe very little technical problems. Some are there but it's not more difficult than otherwise. Um, there's fast learning rates. There's, there are very little dropouts. Um, I would say even less dropouts of presentations than on usual conferences. Um, and there, there, are, there are nice new details. Now I can see the name of every person that is in the same session. I can chat with them. Um, sometimes people go very close to see more details of the slides. Um, so this kind of new behavior we see here, um, we had as a kind of um, emergency solution, these decentralized um, sessions where session groups choose their own title, organize themselves. Um, yeah, I really look forward to the evaluation, what other things about this. I got one feedback, oh, this proves the first theorem of welfare economics to be true, because decentralized decisions are sometimes better and sometimes it also helps just that people in the same session meet before the conference and exchange their views. So it's a kind of networking exercise. On the other hand, of course, it's more abstract. So let's see what, what we learn from this. Um, I think we need to rethink the role and the weight of plenaries. So um, uh, paper sessions were quite full. Plenary sessions were not so full today. Um, that tells maybe something about the functions that plenaries have. Um, yeah, and of course we need to improve on virtual coffee breaks. So, uh, but here I can still advertise again here our spatial chat exercise that we will can that we can continue after uh, the closing plenary this evening. And I really look forward to see how this works out. So it's also a nice social experiment here. And I think that's enough to tell. Um, thanks well, thank you very much, Klaus. This is indeed very useful and, uh, and very important information that you convey here. So I propose that Caroline Fischer uh, take the floor now. Yeah, hello. Um, uh, thanks. I, this has been a, a, a pleasant surprise for me. I think uh, you know, we had no idea what uh, participation would look, like, would look like, and uh, we had to uh, come up with this virtual conference pretty quickly. So I've been really impressed with our members and their participation. Um, in engaging myself, there's some things I, I um, really like about the virtual conference. It certainly makes session hopping a lot easier. You don't have to go find rooms in different, uh, in different buildings. You can just click on a different um, Zoom or webinar link. Um, in fact, there was uh, at, at one point I couldn't decide between sessions, so I had two on simultaneously. That was maybe a little hard to keep <laughs> pay attention, but uh, it allowed me to, to check in and uh, see how my colleagues uh, uh, were doing. So, um, so that was nice. Um, I I think it's also nice that we're able to um, spread out time wise a bit more than in you know a physical conference you obviously can't be grown in a physical conference um you know we can't uh um keep people in town for for too too long um so yeah just a, a reminder there are sessions continuing over the weekend and all next week um uh, to check out and i think it's nice that we can Sort of advertise these to a broader audience that wouldn't be able to uh, say take a transatlantic or a transpacific flight to attend the conference but they can still um, tune into specific sessions so i think that has been 
um, a really nice aspect. Um, but of course, personally, I really miss the, the interactions with people, the in-person interactions. There are uh, like so many uh, friends um, and colleagues in Erie that I just miss seeing. And I really, I always look forward to seeing them at the um, annual meeting. So I really hope that we can do it in person next year. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think there are some interesting aspects to think about that we might incorporate, maybe not just in an annual conference, um, but also throughout the year um, in terms of uh, engagement with our membership. And finally, I just want to give a big shout out to Paul Mutzel, who has um, really uh, impressed me. He uh, has been um, uh, very effective in helping organize this conference. He did a lot on the back end that you'll never see, but um, it was really impressive, especially for someone who won a Best Dissertation Award um, to uh, take the time out of his ambitious research agenda to contribute to this conference. So a big thanks to him, um, and he'll be moving on next year. So, so thanks. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Caroline. We, I, I, uh... I second you on uh, on Paul's uh, congratulations about the outcome of the, of the, in particular in the technical details uh, organizing uh, organizing this event. Uh, Phoebe, uh, what what do you have to to submit to the to the member as ideas and, and uh, advices? Well, I think that we are uh, facing a structural break. Uh, up to now, this was a very successful conference, and I think the way we will be interacting in the future will be different. And I am happy that this is uh, taking place. I remember back in the old days, more than two decades ago, during my PhD years in Cambridge, one of the most fruitful experiences was the coffee time or tea time, you know how British people are, uh, at the common room, where we were able to discuss and share um, opinions and uh, uh, reactions to state of the art uh, research papers and uh, how policy news would affect our research and uh, how uh, we could interact in a better way in order to respond to what was going on in the world. And we had these discussions with, the, with uh, people of the utmost intellectual capacity. And now I'm thinking that this can happen on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, uh, and spread the benefits of interacting with the uh, leaders, the intellectual leaders of our community, all across our community, all across the members of the European Association of Environmental Economies, who, who can be either in Europe or around the world. This is especially important, and you can feel the importance of this uh, when you live in countries where the field is not very developed yet. So I am suggesting, and I know that Christian has already thought about it and Caroline has mentioned it, I'm suggesting a series of webinars that uh, can be organized in thematic sessions that can be led by our Erie Fellows or people who won uh, awards or are obvious intellectual readers in the particular thematic priority. And in addition, I would like these sessions to be very inclusive for junior researchers and allow them to present their work and get feedback from the uh, senior people. They would, would truly produce benefits that uh, cannot be produced if you are not lucky enough to be in a very good university. Now, a second point, I think that our policy outreach committee is doing miracles, and I also think that it can continue on a monthly or bi-monthly basis producing events, even webinars events, and I think many of us uh, can bring in policy people from the European Union, 
uh, country level uh, political leaders, but also uh, we can achieve engagement of uh, policy in, in the global policy arena. And this is important for trying to influence with our knowledge and our results, uh, the global uh, struggle towards the sustainability transition. Uh, this is important, and I think we can uh, enhance what the POG is doing uh, using um, e-webinars on a bi-monthly uh, basis. I also think it could be interesting for editors of our journals, the official journals, but also other journals that are relevant in the field, to have one, two times a year uh, a webinar discussing with the members of our community in order to interact on uh, new interesting uh, research areas, research areas that interest the journals and uh, get feedback from the scientists in our work. Um, a third point is uh, bringing together the innovation ecosystem. When I was nominated for president, I said that I think it's important that we, the economists and environmental economics, integrate better with the innovation ecosystem. This is the ecosystem that will, is trying to accelerate solutions for the sustainability transition to the market. And usually their main problem is that they do not understand economics. They are mostly engineers, information technology, people, physicists, chemists, and so on. So integrating with us will create a lot of benefits. I've been in this ecosystem through my uh, um, directorship of the climate kick of my country uh, for quite a, many years now, and I see a huge potential for fruitful cross fertilization. Lastly, and I know I talk a lot, uh, <laughs> I would uh, like to see a, a conference that is physical, but also allows uh, the ability for people who cannot afford to have physical presence because of time constraints, because of money constraints, because of parental obligations and so on, to be allowed to present electronically, to be allowed to interact. Uh, this is about making things more accessible to everybody and giving equal opportunities to everybody. Uh, so uh, I will close with this and by saying that I love the composition, the gender composition of this closing session, as opposed to the gender non-balance of the opening session. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Phoebe. I like very much your entrepreneurship. Uh, that's, that's very useful. In particular, I, I fully agree with you that we need to rethink completely the way we organize uh, seminars. Uh, you know, the fact that we have tw 20 or 30 seminars in environmental economics uh, in Europe will probably change into, uh, we will have two or three webinars in Europe on these fields and we will coordinate on that. Uh, that will be useful because it will dramatically reduce the carbon footprint footprints of that kind of activity. And same thing for conferences. I, uh, I was surprised a little bit by Caroline uh, Common saying, okay, I'm, I'm so eager to come back next year uh, in person. Uh, I can feel other person thinking about, well, this time this is nice. I mean, we, uh, we didn't spend time in airports and uh, in, hot, in, in personal hotels. Uh, and, and at the same time, we can meet in uh, virtual meeting they're quite good. We le I learned that from these three months and in particular uh, the last few days uh, since the conference started. But uh, uh, let, let me stop here and, and give the floor to Maria. Maria. Yes. Hi, everyone. Well, first of all, let me add to the words of uh, congratulations uh, to the local organizing committee. You guys have been amazing. You have done so much work in such a quick time. And you had a capacity to adapt to any circumstance. So, when uh, we were thinking about or talking about the fact that um, this year we may have to cancel the conference, you still thought, okay, let's, let's continue this, uh, the, the revision process and let's uh, 
you know, uh, give feedbacks to the authors who submitted their papers and so on. And then, okay, let's try to do a few sessions online. And then, oh, what about if we extend and give the chance to, to increase uh, the number of sessions that will be online and so on and so forth. And suddenly you created all this, all this with a lot of work. Thank you so much, Paul, Klaus, George, Jens, everyone. I am sure I'm forgetting uh, someone, but I never worked with a crowd that was so motivated. So as you see, uh, excellent things can be done and can be done in really quick time. And as all of you, I also share this enthusiasm and this positivism because it is environmentally responsible for us to, to do things in this way. And as Phoebe suggested uh, already, there were some demands out there. Last year, for instance, Kevin Boyle organized an um, organization in which uh, there was a participation for the different presidents of the Environmental Economic Association. So we had the American president, the European, African, and Latin American. And they were talking about the need to facilitate science, to facilitate, to open uh, channels of communication, to have more collaboration, to think on global perspective, uh, to deal with these global problems. And I think the opportunity came. And I think we have the, the technical support to do it and we can do it. So this has been a test. And I think that as a test has been a wonderful uh, result because we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know how it will work, how we will feel. And although, yes, I think <laughs> we miss the personal contact a lot, uh, still uh, we can do a lot of things that uh, they were not uh, initially imagined. So thank you for that. And thank you for, for the still keep going, as I said, because in spite of the situation, we were one of the few associations which have a conference this year. So I was thinking that maybe for next year, we could add, and instead of just having just the regular traditional conference, we could have the additional online settings so that people from, from Africa, from developing countries, from Latin America, from others who cannot travel for whatever reason or cannot afford to travel, uh, they can still join in and listen to what we have to say. So maybe this is an opportunity to increase also our communication channels and not only have uh, the face-to-face -face conference, the personal conference, but also some additional um, communication channels and a lot of activities can be done in that way. Uh, we also have an excellent secretary at our ED, so at EID, so we have to take advantage of all these people we have there with, with great energy and always responding quickly and doing the things. So um, I am very grateful for, for the opportunity to have worked with all of you. It has been a lot of fun and and thank you also to, to Edi for, uh, for letting us experience, for letting us experience this and, and see how things could turn. So it was absolutely great and it was a great pleasure. So thank you so much and I hope to see you really next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Um, well, you know what? Uh, I don't hear Monica, but I know what she uh, sings right now when she hears you. Uh, she will tell if she would be a panelist here. Well, what about the budget? Because if we do it online next year, uh, the budget will be killed for uh, 2021 too, and 2020 is not very good. Uh, you will see at the General Assembly on Monday. So uh, let, let me finish with, uh, with Georg. Uh, Georg, the floor is yours. I'm, I'm eager to hear you. You are the lock. You, you, did, you did most of the job uh, with your team, and I'm... Uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I need to know what you think. Oh my God, it's very difficult now. There are so many experiences exchanged uh, and uh, many things I can completely agree, specifically also the strategic uh, conclusions which were already drawn. Um, but I think I begin with uh, the buzzword budget. I think that's very good, yeah? <laughs> uh, so next year, perhaps we have to talk about how we can integrate um, these virtual elements into a uh, format for Erie, such that it can also serve, let's say it's a bit provocative, also as a cross subsidy mechanism, perhaps, because uh, of course we have to charge a little bit for the infrastructure. And uh, that's the first thing I wanted to say. It's a view of an uh, accounting guy, that's uh, money. But there's a second dimension, which is of course, uh, the carbon footprint. And uh, I think we have to make up our mind, perhaps with a session next year, I don't know, where we talk about what are the exact carbon costs. Of course, they are less than in, uh, when we have a um, conference in person, but nevertheless, there are uh, 
quite a big amount of carbon footprints, not because uh, we have this direct conference now. Direct costs are not so high. There's a, uh, meanwhile, uh, analysis, a paper of Joshua Eslan these days, 2017, and he estimated that one gigabyte costs about 60 watt hours, which is uh, 0.06 kilowatt hours. You can transform this uh, with the Euro mix into carbon output, of course. And what you observe also, the efficiency is highly rising. Each two years, um, the, the efficiency rises, doubles more or less. It's sort of uh, Moore's law, more or less, applied to that. But there are also, and that's my last uh, um, thing I wanted to say, they are not only direct costs. Indirect costs in, term of, in terms of carbon emissions are rather high, perhaps higher than um, direct costs. And I refer to, um, let's say, storing data. Storing data is very uh, expensive in terms of carbon footprint. You have to store all these papers. I'm a bit polemical now, yeah? And uh, uh, there are some studies as well, and also observations that many uh, data stored are, in a sense, digital waste, but they ne never disappear yeah, because they are stored somewhere in the background uh, of servers, and nobody cares about that. So we have to, to make up our mind in terms of, let's say, uh, a session next year, how to handle that. And then we end up big and high next year with a carbon calculator for um, a digital conference. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, excellent idea. Uh, it would be nice to try to compute the, the reduction in, in the carbon footprint uh, between a virtual event like this one and, and a conference in person uh, as usual. Um, yeah, that would be nice to as, a, as an exercise for uh, a metal economist. Uh, so thank you very much. I see many, many comments uh, and, uh, and discussion going on in the, in the chat of the conference. I, I, uh, this, yeah, we have no time to look at that, but let me tell you, on Monday, uh, as I will say, say a minute, on Monday we have a general assembly. And be sure that those who will be there on Monday will have the ability to, to, make, to, to present their view on, on, on this. And so I invite you all to participate to this event on Monday. Uh, but so thank you, for the, thank you to all panelists uh, and, and sure we will uh, make uh, these uh, assessments of the situation more detailed in the next few weeks. Uh, looking at the data, looking at what happened next 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 uh, next week, uh, and, and then we will uh, we will uh, we by the way we have a council meeting uh, on mid July to also uh, talk about that and ensure this will be an important event. So thank you very much to the panel. So let me now try to conclude this session with a few additional information and, and comments. So first uh, first of all. Uh, once again, uh, that's, my la that's the last possibility I have now to officially, uh, in the name of the Council of the Association, in fact, in the name of the all members of the Association, uh, to, to thanks and to congratulate uh, all the people who made this thing possible. Again, this tour de force was... Uh, was very risky. Uh, when we think about the situation in March and April, I mean, uh, deciding to do online, to do it online was quite risky, and we decided to take the risk. Uh, we, uh, we know there are some angry members of the association that could be very unhappy with the solution and may, pre may have preferred a, 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 a conference uh, in person or a full consultation. We decided to take our responsibility, and I would like to thank all the people who only, not only uh, took their responsibility, but also uh, make that uh, dream of uh, this year making, making the conference virtual uh, a, a reality. So in particular, as I said this morning, I would like to thank uh, uh, Georg, uh, Jens, uh, Christian, Marcus, uh, um, Klaus, Caroline, Maria, uh, Achim, uh, Paul uh, Netz Netzov, uh, we, uh, Caroline already uh, pinpointed uh, Paul in particular. It's true that uh, the technicalities of the, the event was uh, 
mostly solved by him. So, so, so to, for all of them, I would like to make a, 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 an ovation, uh, an applause. Uh, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm, uh, you are the, I'm the only one you hear about the applause. It should be a, a, a standing ovation, but I'm sorry if I, I, I do stand, you will realize that I have a Bermuda. Uh, so I will not do that. But anyway, um, thanks everyone uh, in, the, in the local organization committee, the centric program committee, uh, the council member, um, and so on. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. So uh, very quickly, um, I would like to uh, mention, as I said this morning, that uh, we have uh, institutional members uh, who are uh, research center uh, association related to uh, the environment, universities. Um, I would like to ex express my gratitude to these institutional members for materially supporting the association to achieve its mission. Uh, these are our current uh, institution members, um, uh, and next slide will be about the current uh, university institutional members. Uh, let me take the occasion of this list, uh, as you see on the screen, that if you don't see your university on the screen, maybe you should think about trying to convince your, your university or your department to to uh, become uh, institutional members. Um, so please, uh, if you have any uh, possibility to help us in that dimension, uh, come to us or talk to your university and see what you can get. Uh, thank you in advance. Next slide. Um, and so as, as I said this morning in the open, opening session, you can also, if you are not yet a member, uh, become a, a member of the association there. It's much simpler. You go on the website and you register. Thank you very much. Next slide. Okay, as I said uh, uh, at the end of the panel, uh, we just add on, on the uh, assessments of the virtual events. Uh, we have uh, um, a general assembly of the, them, of the members on Monday. It will take place at three o'clock uh, Berlin time, uh, virtual. Uh, and so please uh, come join us. Uh, we need your... Uh, your, um, your advices, your contribution, and, and your votes. Uh, there will be a lot of things to vote, in particular on the financial statements of the association, which is uh, a, thing, a source of stress, given the fact that uh, this year the conference takes place uh, in, in virtually. Uh, so please uh, come and participate. Uh, next slide. OK. Um, we have um, a problem with virtual conference um, in one important dimension, which is networking and uh, social interaction. Uh, social distancing is, uh, is a difficulty in the long run. In the, short, in the short run, we can survive, but in the long run, we need to improve and get richer networks. Uh, it's from networks and discussion that new ideas uh, emerge. And so, um, uh, that's a difficulty we identify from the beginning when we decide to go online. Uh, and uh, I'm happy uh, to uh, uh, again uh, remind you that this week we decided to expand the program by having today uh, from uh, 9 a.m. this morning to uh, late in the evening tonight uh, 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 a virtual chat. And so you have the address there. Uh, I must tell you that uh, I went there uh, virtually in the, in the virt virtual chat at, at lunchtime. And, it, and, and it's, it's great. I mean, it's exciting. A lot of fun there. So uh, please join us. Um, so it's already open. You can, go, you can go there immediately after uh, the ending of this uh, closing session. But uh, technically, we decided to coordinate that for the 7 p.m. By the way, it will, this will give me time to purchase the bottles of beer before joining you at that event. So please come join us. It's fun, it's exciting, and you can make uh, contact with, uh, with people you don't know together with people you know too. So um, I would also thank the uh, uh, pol uh, Policy Outreach Committee. Phoebe mentioned that uh, a few minutes ago. It's uh, a key component of our strategy to get uh, more visibility and, and more influence in the political and uh, public opinion arenas. Um, and so 
let me again congratulate the, the members of the uh, policy uh, outreach committee. If you have ideas to extend the, uh, the, pro the project, uh, please uh, uh, come to the General Assembly on Monday and talk about that. Uh, I also uh, want to uh, thank the uh, Board of Cont Country Representatives. We had a meeting in, in May uh, with, the, with the Country Representative. That was very useful to prepare this event uh, in, uh, well, I would say Berlin, but uh, in virtual. Uh, and so I would like to thank the efforts of the member of this uh, country, uh, country board. Um, it's very useful. So this year, uh, we already had the, the meeting in, in, in May. Usually, we have a meeting of the board uh, during, the, uh, during the conference. Next slide. Last but not least, let me uh, take the opportunity of closing this session by uh, having, expressing my extreme gratitude to, um, to the people who make the life of this association uh, a reality and, and a good reality. So in particular, uh, I, I would like to express my gratitude to three persons uh, to, with, with whom I've been, I've been in close contact over the last few months, uh, given the crisis. Uh, in particular, I would like to thank Monica, Martina, and Otavia uh, together with Sylvia, uh, Kiki, and Paolo, but uh, the first three persons have been, from my point of view, as I have seen, particularly critical in, uh, in helping the association uh, to go through this crisis uh, with, uh, with, little, with, with little problem. And in fact, uh, as you can see from this event, uh, with rather uh, a, a transformation of the crisis into opportunities of, of going online. So thank you very much to uh, Monica, Martina, and, and Otavia. And again, uh, let us go for a standing ovation. I will stay sick because of my Bermuda again, sorry. So this is the end of the uh, uh, closing session. This is not the end of the conference. So I hope to see you tonight at 7 p.m. on the virtual chat and uh, tomorrow in the next few days for a parallel session. And remember also on Monday for the General Assembly. Thank you very much. Maybe Georg or Klaus want to add uh, something before uh, completely closing the session. Oh, I just have to re reiterate that uh, we would be very happy to have you all in the spatial chat. It's very important. It gives you an impression of, of virtual Berlin as you would sense it next year in reality then. Thank you. Thank you, Georg. See you in the virtual chat right now or at 7 p.m. Bye-bye.